people that say, it's usually men that say, oh, just forget about it. Why are you going on about that? Why are you still talking about those old stories of past lives or witches? My husband says that. Why are you talking about that? It happened so long ago. No, it's happening currently. Oppression of women is happening currently, globally. I just watched The Ring last night. Epic movie. I watched it when my kids were little. Like, nobody can believe that I had my kids watch that movie when um, they were eight, six, and four. And, you know, dire circumstances, dire freaking straits of being a mother. My eight-year-old had broken his arm, and it was summertime. It was August. And he'd broken his arm, and he couldn't do anything. It was very painful, and he had a cast, and there was no school, no camp, and he couldn't have gone anyway. And he was the leader of kind of the neighborhood gangs of our kids, the playmates, but, you know, people were on vacation. I was alone with my three kids. My husband goes to work, you know, leaving me, you know, with, with the kids, what to do with the kids all day. And uh, my kids were hard to occupy on any day. They couldn't go to the pool, couldn't really have play dates. Um, you know, as a leader, my son was in pain. So we put on the ring <laughs> and they liked it. They weren't even traumatized. This is my kids. They're creatives. They're artists they like horror put on the ring <laughs> you've watched it <sighs> yeah so anyway i must have been really traumatized to put that on and it was over i remember it was a beautiful august day and i remember going out to the scene where it is now like my kids are grown now like i'm I'm 63 now, and my kids now are 30, 27, and 25. So, oh, crows. So I'm not traumatized anymore because I did so much labor to raise my children as a stay-at-home mother, as somebody with no family support um, and my husband worked long hours, so you can do that math. It's a, it's a lot of hard work. I did 110 hours a week of unpaid labor, and people say, oh, you didn't do that much. I did that much. I did that much. It was the way my kids were and what I did and what I had to do, but, you know, 110 hours a week, that's how much labor a woman can do, and I was told I wasn't working. But anyway, I watched The Ring then, and we put it on, Last night, we watched The Ring again, and oh my goodness. I just saw, um, at the time, I was fucking traumatized by it. It was so scary. I couldn't be alone after I watched it. It was 2003 I watched it. I couldn't be alone. And then I saw last night, because I can see more of the records. I have time now. My kids are grown. I have time. I can see the records, I can see past lives, and I see that somebody, whoever made the ring, knows about some of my past lives. And this house here, that I look out over, are blind neighbors. You can't see it, but they got like this ring, of stone in their backyard somewhere. But in a past life, in the 1700s, the man that lives there now was my daughter. And she could kill with her mind. I tell you true, we were witches. She killed with her mind and she looked like the girl from the ring. So whoever wrote that story knew about my daughter, the curtain of hair, she killed with her mind. I've had lives where I could kill with my mind. I can't in this life. I can't in this life. <sighs> but the secret to that movie, and, and there was other clues of other of my past lives, 
the secret in that movie is the mother and the son don't die because they make a tape of Samara's story. She created it with her mind and her trauma and isolation. If you tell her story, you live. If you copy the tape and tell her story, you live. If you watch the movie and don't copy the tape and don't share her story, you die. And it's, it's I realize that it's very profound metaphor. All time happens at once. Whoever made the ring is somehow linked to me and that I am Samara in that movie that I create my stories, my movies, literally, alone in my isolation with my memories of these traumatic past lives as a woman, as a mother. And just like Samara, they said, she won't stop. She won't ever stop. She won't stop telling her story. I will not stop telling my stories that I remember of my past lives of rape, being raped to death, being abandoned as a mother, having to smother my children to death because the father abandoned us, and so many others that the trauma that women and children bear under patriarchy for 5,000 years that trauma will not go away without being heard, watched, listened to, absorbed, understood, and even more shared. You must copy and share that story. As long as people, mostly men, my husband is one of them, say, stop talking about this. Why can't you stop? I can't stop. I am Samara in the movie. I won't stop making my art, which is made from my pain and my isolation and my drive as a woman, as a female artist, as a mother, to tell the stories that I must tell. And like in the movie, she wants it on every TV. Samara can put her movie magically on every TV. Well, Donatella is going to be on every TV. And I'm going to be speaking publicly about these stories, interlocking stories of trauma that women and children have suffered under the patriarchy. And it is not enough to say, go away, stop talking. Nobody wants to hear it. Well, all women and children have suffered those fates. So we know, we know what the trauma is and we won't stop until we're heard. And here comes a train. That's a great way to end this.